All right, this project here is kind of going to be a two-in-one. What I'm doing is I'm replacing basically the whole brake assembly. Uh, this is a 10-inch brake, and the car is supposed to have 9-inch brakes, but this rear end is off of a V8, and this is a six-cylinder car. I've already done the other side, and so now i just got to do this side. So I'm pulling the axle shaft out, the brake assembly, and the backing plate. So what I'm going to do is kind of break this into two parts or two different videos um, where one's going to be focused on the axle shaft work itself and the other one will be reassembling the brakes, kind of a treatise on drum brakes because there is a lot of misinformation and lack of information on working on drum brakes and I, I think some people could use the extra information. So that's what I'm going to do. And not so much related to this project, but you're probably asking why am I putting smaller brakes on when it would make more sense to put the larger brakes on the front. And actually that is correct. The 10 inch around the car would be more ideal, but uh, they're really hard to source, especially the front ones. So I got to go back to this to be a more safe situation because it's actually been like this for a lot of years. And under normal braking, the car would stop fine but if you had to do any quick braking the rear end would lock up first and you would have to ignore it and still do your quick braking because the front brakes are the ones you know doing what 80 percent of the work so well at that point it's doing most of the work so i need to get back to a safer braking situation and so we're going back to the nine inch now i have a drum puller and Sometimes you can just pull these off, but often not, because what happens is the shoe uh, wears into the drum, puts some grooves in it, and uh, you can go back there where the star adjustment is and relax the adjustment and get it off. Sometimes it might take a little bit of prying with your screwdrivers back here. Just be gentle with that because uh, you don't want to bend your back. And See, hardly any effort at all. And you can see this drum it is scratched up. It's got some mild grooves in it. Sometimes you get a lip out here too from wear. And it just makes it hard for the shoes to let go because they're ingrained into the drum. Now let's talk about some tools. If you're working on drum brakes, you can get a really cheap kit. Harbor Freight's got them. They're, they're real common. And they'll come with these spring pliers, an adjustment spoon, and a spring retainer driver. Now this won't, well actually this will be used here. This is used on there. Um, I was about to say it's not used here because typically the uh, these early Mopars have a small spring, but it's exclusive to them, and it doesn't use these. But maybe because this is an eight-cylinder axle, it's got the traditional set. But anyway, this is for reaching through the back and adjusting it. See, that's your star wheel down there. One way loosens it, the other way tightens it. You'll see more of that later after everything's out of the way. And yeah, you can get away with using a, a wide screwdriver, but it's just, the whole kit was pretty cheap. Mine's not from that, but I've seen them and they're really inexpensive. And doing it right just makes the job a lot easier. So, let me start by taking the 
shoes off and it's just a matter of taking off the hardware and again we will go over this in more detail when I'm putting it together and I'm gonna cut the video up into two videos go over the drum brakes in more detail. But yeah, I used to do all this stuff with screwdrivers and pliers. And it's absolutely doable, but it's a pain. Now I've given that caution before in my other video, the forklift brakes, but I'll do it again here in case you didn't see that one. But older vehicles like this, there is a chance that there's asbestos in this dust, so don't breathe it in. And if you got to clean it, you know, scrape it. Uh, use a wire wire brush or something and a dust mask but don't blast it with air you don't want to breathe that stuff in now these brakes here probably don't have asbestos in it because that stuff's been banned for so long I think it was in the 70s if I remember right so I'm sure the vehicles had brake jobs since then but that doesn't mean they're still dust residue in there because you know not everybody bothers to clean their work this particular vehicle is a 63 Valiant uh, the rear ends off a of 66 but what you're gonna see you know this stuff is also similar what applies here is going to apply to most rear-wheel drive vehicles at least traditional solid axle rear-wheel drive vehicles and so if you can do one you can do another you just have to study in case there are subtle differences for instance you know I said we're gonna pull this axle out because you have to to get the backing plate off anyway but also these at both my axles are slightly bent and so you can see the wheel wobbling I'm exaggerating but you can see the wheel wobbling around and I have replacement axle shafts for this so we're gonna pull this out put the 9 inch brake backing plate on there and put the new axle shaft in now the, the there's a flange that holds the axle shaft to the backing plate and to the axle itself and there's four nuts on it they're back here um, yeah you could get a wrench in there and work it but this is what this hole here is that's an access hole so you can spin it around and just get a socket on there other vehicles might be different they may not have that or they may have a notch in it instead um, this particular vehicle and, and Chrysler's and Ford's usually you just unbolt that and you can slide this out sometimes it takes a puller but that's all that's involved in removing it and um, for instance Chevrolet's have a clip on the end of the axle shaft so you actually have to open up the pumpkin and remove that clip before you can pull the shaft out so it is important to look at your manual or do some research and see if what you're working on has little quirks because you don't want to force anything or you're going to break stuff. All right, I'm going to get some tools. Be right back. Okay, car's in neutral. Obviously, you can't set your parking brake because this is your parking brake and you won't be able to pull it apart if you have your parking brake set. Um, 
There's also a little bit of the setup I meant to show originally, so I will video it a little bit later and then tack it to the beginning of this clip so you can see how I have it jacked up and why. Okay, so here's my setup. Wheel is chalked. I have a jack under the body and a jack under the axle. The axle one is the one relevant to this. The reason I have to jack this car up by the body is this fender skirt is so low that if I jack it up by the axle, it puts the tire so far up there it's real hard to get out. What you want to do is make sure you have a jack on the side that you're working on. And the reason for that is to put that tilt on the axle. See, this side is higher. So it eliminates the chance of gear oil from inside the tubes and in the pumpkin to run out that side of the axle. So just make sure you jack this side up higher than the other side. So wheels are chalked, it's in neutral, parking brake is off. I can turn this to whichever one of those nuts I want. I think they're 9 sixteenths. Yes, they are. Okay, so now it's ready to come out. And I was looking on the other side, and the thing just actually slid out. If it's pressed in too tight to do that, there's a couple of things you can do. You can put a puller on it, and all it is is a slide hammer. And let's check on this one. Yeah, see, so that came out easy too. But let's say it didn't, and you didn't have a puller. What you do. put your drum on there backwards and you start a few of the nuts not too tight in fact I went too far on that one so you want to give yourself sliding ring you're basically turning the drum into a slide hammer so you just go boom 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 until it comes off. So now the shaft is ready to come out and the backing plate doesn't have much holding it on anymore either but I have to remove the emergency brake cable and then there's a brake line going to the back of the wheel cylinder. But the shaft just comes out. Let's see what I was talking about. If I remember right, it's on General Motors cars. There's a notch here, and then there's a, a C clip or a, a retaining clip of some kind on there. So you have to pull the cover off the pumpkin and remove that before you pull this out. What holds it together, let's see if I can get this in frame. See that's the bearing right there. It's pressed onto the axle shaft and this flange is encapsulated between that bearing and the flange there. So when this is bolted up here, it just holds the bearing in place. So that's why sometimes if you see a car where the rear end goes bad, it loses the shaft because the bearing will lose its, its rollers. And so it separates from it. 
and then the shaft will slide out. You can replace these on your own, it's not easy, but what you do is you cut the old bearing off and make sure you don't nick the shaft. You cut through the race enough to where you can split it with a, uh, a chisel and you take it off. Just be darn sure you don't hurt the shaft. Then you heat up the new bearing so it's larger and you slide it onto the shaft and then you get a pipe that'll slide over the shaft and sit up on the race. Not the bearing, but on the race. And then you pound on that pipe until this is pressed down to its position. Uh, but you can also just take it to a machine shop. They don't charge you a whole lot to do that. That's probably the better option. And on this vehicle here too, they use a uh, it's kind of a foam gasket that goes between the um, this flange and the brake plate. There's also a seal. Well, maybe on this one it's in the bearing because usually there's a seal on the flange. And I'm not seeing it. Anyway, it has to be sealed off one way or the other so the the gear oil from the axle can't seep through there. If it does and it leaks out here, you'll get oil all over your brake parts and your brakes effectively won't work. So if you open this up and you have gear oil everywhere, that's why the seal in here let, let go. Another tool that I recommend is these brake line wrenches. It will capture more sides of the nut than a, a traditional open end wrench and it's real easy to round those out. Now I could go back there and just loosen this now but I'm going to show you how these work so in a little bit we'll crawl under there and take a look at that. Now getting this uh, emergency brake line out of that hole is a little bit of a struggle. It's got these two tabs that push out once it's through the hole. And this outer one's pretty easy to get to, obviously, but the back one's not. So you just have to kind of struggle with it. Getting this off isn't too bad. You just have to push that spring in enough to where you can work it off. Because all this hardware has to be changed since I'm going back to the 9-inch brakes. I won't be using any of this. Uh, except for the emergency brake cable itself. So you can push this one in easy enough. So see that side's loose now, but the back one isn't so easy. And this one popped back out while I was trying to do that. Maybe if I pull this out, I can twist it to where I could get both sides. And that means we have to do the brake line now, so let's reposition. Okay, so we have, these are the two bolts that hold the wheel cylinder in place. That's the brake bleeder. And then that's the line right below it. Down at the bottom of the backing plate is the notch where you put the uh, adjuster spoon to turn the star wheel. Again, there will be more on that later. So up here, all we need to do is remove that brake line. And whenever you disturb a brake line, I might have to take that bleeder out just to get the wrench on it. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, whenever you disturb a brake line, or even a bleeder for that much, this one still has the dust cap on it. You're going to have to bleed the brakes, which I know I will because I have, like I said, I have to replace all this anyway. 
but yeah, whenever you open up the hydraulic system, you have to adjust the brakes, or bleed the brakes, rather. Let's see if i got a socket that'll fit that. My battery may be almost out, but that's okay. If it goes out, I'll just call it a day. Kind of losing daylight here anyway. And I'll just regroup tomorrow, and that'll just be a few moments for you guys. Okay, so I got the bleeder off and out of the way, and I'm trying to find out the size for you if anybody's following along. It is a 5 sixteenths, and the brake line itself is a 3 eighths. Yeah. yeah, these are a great tool. Flared nut wrench or something like that. See, these nuts are hollow because the brake line goes through it, and that means they're soft. So if you put a regular open-end wrench on it, it usually just compresses it and makes it round out. That's off, and we're ready to go back out. Okay, so now that's the only thing in our way. like there's three tabs not two and that one in the back See if these hose pliers can get around it. Yeah, that did it. Nice. So you see, there's these tabs that stick out, and then when they pass through the hole they expand and I was thinking if you had a small sleeve that would fit over there I mean that's probably the proper tool for doing that but realize these hose pliers might do it and they did okay like I said battery's almost dead and uh, this is good enough progress for right now I'll rejoin you tomorrow which will be just a few seconds on your end Okay, now we're ready to start reassembly. It uses a gasket. There's a part number. It's a foam gasket. Goes on this flange, on the back of the backing plate, and then again on the front of the backing plate. Obviously the cut goes towards the top. It's the same gasket on both sides. And 
and I got the old gasket cleaned off of all the surfaces. This is the 9 inch uh, the 9 inch brake backing plate. That just snaps in place. Put that in place. Put the other gasket on. And slide the replacement shaft and now on this flange here, this part that has a little drop in it goes towards the bottom. These nuts are coned, so you want the flat side of it going towards the flange. I believe the torque spec on these is 45 foot pounds. But I will verify before I release the video. All right, so as far as the axle shaft change goes, that's it. That job's done other than checking the differential to make sure it has a proper level of fluid in it. It should since I lost none, but it's always a good idea to check. I'll cut this video off here in the second video is going to contain uh, assembling the brakes 
and a bit of a treatise on drum brakes too to help people understand it a little better so thanks for watching and uh, click on the next one when it's available to see the rest of the reassembly